வணக்கம் டுடேஸ் ரீடிங் ஃப்ரம் அகஸ்தியா பர்பஸ் ஆஃப் லைஃப் வி வில் கண்டினியூ ஆன் தி டாபிக் கர்மா மிஸ் சுமதி யா before we begin i would like to um read the reread the paragraph which we had completed uh, last year so um i'll go over the paragraph again however you cannot med- meditate without first acquiring knowledge so that is the reason that meditation and knowledge have to go together how does one gain knowledge for the most part it is through books satsang and gurus however there are some that are beyond this they connect directly to cosmic knowledge and become gnanis without books or gurus ramakrishna paramahamsa ramana maharshi and many such gurus of kali yuga belong to this category thank you sister sumati this was something that you know as i was just you know opening the book to uh, for the reading today it just struck me and i realized we did not uh, you know go over this point again uh, what happens is appa continues to appa agastya continues to to reiterate that we must have knowledge along with meditation and that is very very important he says one of the reasons is that when you have the knowledge as a foundation then walking on the path and uh, practicing meditation everything is much more focused and you understand why you are doing what you are doing why you have you have to have satsang because of the company of the good which helps you you know strengthen each other's meditative uh, consciousness to reach a higher level why you want to do it in the same place because that con- that energy remains in that area and that strengthens your ability to continue meditation easily next time and then when you understand the causes of karma and why karma then you start beginning to live a righteous life all these are foundations for spiritual aspirant and so appa continues to uh, you know stress you must have knowledge along with meditation and that is what advali pad is all about giving the basis of knowledge but again he also says something very important that i missed last time he says how does one gain knowledge he says it is through books satsang or gurus however there are some that are beyond this they connect directly to cosmic knowledge and become gnanis without books or gurus ramakrishna paramahamsa ramana maharishi and many such gurus of kali yuga belong to this category now that is so important very says many such gurus of kali yuga belong to this category because as we all know this is the period when humanity's ignorance of the spiritual levels have become very very low so there are a lot of blessed beings who have become incarnate or have taken rebirth again to lead others and many of these are actually connecting directly to cosmic knowledge because they've already had gurus in the previous lives and they're just reconnecting to the consciousness of that guru in this life so they do not have a physical guru and it is okay because you know in the meditating meditation circles or spiritual circles we are so very focused on the fact that we should have a lineage of gurus we should have a guru but appa is very clearly saying in kali yuga that particular truth does not hold good because things are changing the ability to walk faster on the uh, spiritual path is given to us because of the profound negativity that is prevalent in the world so the those who try and uh, walk on the spiritual path can walk in leaps and bounds in this particular time because we are already fighting against all the negativity within us and around us we are able to do that much better so this was a very very important topic uh, part that i had it hadn't even occurred to me last time when we were reading so now we will get back to the question where uh, the question is if a person takes revenge in his next incarnation will he not in in turn incur bad karma that's uh, where we stopped last time go ahead sister sumit that's a two paragraphs up yes let us take some examples 
a person is responsible for the death of another. While dying, the victim is aware of the person who has killed him and that and that thought carries over to the next incarnation. Without this knowledge, the victim may try to take revenge on the person. Take another example. A person kills a sacred animal like a cow. Such a person has to go through suffering owing to diseases in the next life. These are what we call Naga Dosha, Sarpa Dosha or Stri Dosha. Limiting factors are those that cause problems. These manifest as suffering. Anuradha. So what we are uh, learning in this is that whatever occurs, happens to us in each lifetime, the strongest impressions we carry along with us as we go into the next incarnation. So when we love somebody strongly, when we hate somebody strongly, and when we have experienced trauma, all these continue with us. We may not know why we are exper experiencing what we are experiencing when we meet another person. For example, we meet somebody and immediately don't feel, you feel a kind of uh, dislike towards them. Maybe it's because you've had a previous karmic you know, interaction with that particular soul where that soul has hurt you, so you're carrying that anger. So another thing I was saying is if a person kills some, a sacred animal like a cow, then it manifests as disease. Now, this is not uh, explained in any other uh, books so far that I have read. This is something Appa is showing us because we all talk about Naga Dosha, Sarpa Dosha, Sri Dosha, and atonement for those things, but we don't know why it occurs. And he's saying many of the diseases we suffer could be because of karma that might be related to doing something wrong like killing a cow. Uh, go ahead, Sister Sina. So, Anuradha asks another question. If a person takes revenge in his next incarnation, will he not in turn incur bad karma? So Sage Agastya says, in this particular case, the person who takes revenge commits a similar mistake for which he too has to undergo atonement. Who is responsible for this revenge? The cause of which he does not himself remember in this case. It is difficult to explain whether the actions are prompted from within or without. If the divine plan wants you to conduct a mission like killing someone in the battlefield like the epic wars of the year, then you are only an instrument. Your actions do not fall under the category of sin. Innocent sins of the body do not pollute the soul. So here, again, important, important thing. The uh, uh, thing that Appa is telling us is this. If, uh, okay, how, what happens? Somebody kills me. Come back in the next life. I have that anger. I don't know why that severe anger is there. Uh, opportunity arises. There is an uh, altercation between me and the other soul, and I try to kill that person. So Appa says that is bad too, because you are doing the same thing that the other person did to you. So we, in this, we can remember something very simple that Gandhiji said. He said, "Eye for an eye makes the whole world blind." So. We have to remember that these things are not just sayings and quotations which have not much serious meaning. There's a lot of uh, meaning behind this because Gandhiji was a very spiritually evolved soul. So what we have to understand is no matter what another person does to us, we must remove the idea of revenge from our, our hearts or anger because all that is happening is we continue the vicious cycle. So we'll come back again to suffer for what we did to them. And they'll come back to do that until one of us stop. So as spiritual aspirants, what can we do today is watch what we are doing, how we are reacting to how people treat us. Somebody is scolding you, keep quiet. Think of God or Guru. Offer all that to God and Guru and say, that soul doesn't know what they're doing. I forgive them. I don't want to carry this karma forward because if I get angry, I'm going to scold a person and this is going to continue. Because everything that we do that affects another and hurts another, even because, because they instigated in the first place, doesn't matter. It still becomes our karma because we have a choice not to continue that cycle. 
So that is so very important. So he says, however, there are certain times when somebody is duty bound to do something. A soldier in the army, when he is told to go through a, you know, killing is wrong, but he is told to go kill somebody, he has to, that's his duty. He, he, he does not know the other soul. There is no uh, personal uh, anger or animosity. He's not doing it because he wants to kill, because he has been asked to kill. So that is what he says happened in the ep epics of the Eeyore when people were asked to go ahead and uh, kill people. And that's why Arjuna, when he said, I do not want to kill them, they are my family, then Krishna says, no, I am the doer. You are just an instrument. So in certain times when we react because of a greater good, that is okay. Even Christ, when he was in the temple and he went and scolded the uh, Parsis, he was actually doing the right thing because he was talk, uh, you know, speaking up against unrighteousness. And that is okay. When it is for the greater good, when it is selfless, action for others is okay. But when it is personally instigated by our ego because our ego got hurt, then that is a karma. Go ahead. Anuradha asks another question. Is it necessary to remember the sins of past lives? Agastya says, you cannot ordinarily recall past lives. This is where the law of dharma takes over. That is the meaning of the phrase. God sees the truth but waits. Why do you want to remember your past life? For a person like you, who has chosen the path of right knowledge, it is not important to know the biographical background of your actions. You must feel that you are on the right path now. You are under the guidance of your guru. Very you are like a patient. Yeah. So let us uh, stop for a moment. Yeah. So my question was, okay, if we remember, I mean, my thought at the time when I asked the question was, if we can remember our past sins, then maybe we will not do the same thing again. But he says, no, you cannot ordinarily recall past lives. And I'll explain the, uh, why a little later. And he says, this is where the law of dharma takes over. And, you know, we normally have the saying in many religions, God sees the truth but waits. Here, who is God? The God is the soul, the soul that is the microcosm of the macrocosm that is within you. So they, the, the soul knows, but it does not react. For that sin, it knows the sin, but it does not go and you know the soul does not instigate the body and the mind to react. And you know when we as spiritual aspirants become aware of our soul, the purity of our soul, the purpose of our lives, we realize that when something bad happens to us, we do not react. We will because we do not want to create more karma. Now he also says. You know, it is not important for you to for you to know the bad biographical background of your actions. Why does he say that? Think about that. If I were a thief or a murderer or a prostitute or somebody who did something really bad in a previous life, how is that going to affect me in this life if I remember that? It is going to cause a lot of pain and confusion in myself. So when we judge someone else, you know, someone else's action, whether, you know, it's a small action that we're judging or a major action we're judging, we're saying that person, they, they dress improperly or this person has, you know, been in a relationship with many people or the, uh, the immoral. We must remember, we could have been all that in a previous life. That is why it becomes very important not to judge anybody. Because in a way, not remembering a past life is actually a blessing. And I'll explain why. I actually went through a past life regression session with a very highly spiritual evolved person in myself. And the very first time I went in, I went to a higher plane and he had to bring me back. And I'll explain that some other day when the uh, situation comes. But the next time when I went back, I could actually see myself sitting in front of a funeral fire with a back to myself and wailing because my husband has died. Now, when the person brought me back into this life, I woke up or sat up, held my dupatta to my face and I was wailing 
my husband is dead. But you know, that was from a previous life. But I had carried that that pain over. So it took me three days to get out of that feeling because there was the confusion because the soul knew that I was that person and I was also this person. So imagine if you remember all your past lives, we are all going to be walking around like a very traumatized, confused people. And that is why we do not re recall past lives unless it's really necessary. If uh, somebody really needs to learn something by remembering their past life, that's the only occasion when they're allowed to see that. But as you go, go forward in your, in your spiritual path, there comes a time when you start recalling certain things. They may be like feelings. Oh, I have been here before. I have seen this before. I have done this before. And that is all just memories of a past life. And they're not important. Because what we have to look at spiritual aspirants is the life forward. We cannot change what we have done in the past, but we can change what we are doing now so that our future is going to be good. Go ahead, please. You are like a child being led by its mother. When it stumbles, it is not aware of it, but the mother knows how to lift the child up so it can walk again. When the child grows up, it will not recall that it had stumbled. Likewise, it is not necessary to remember past lives. When you have the knowledge of causes and effects of karma, and when you believe in destiny, keep walking and let your guru guide you on the righteous path. A beautiful, beautiful reminder to all of us. Once we have surrendered to a guru, that guru, it becomes that guru's responsibility to help us. So when we stumble, even if they are not in physical, you know, life here, you know, in the physical, in the, in the physical body here, you know, many of us have gurus who have already passed on, like my guru Yogananda has passed on. So. But I feel his presence much more clearly now than I would have probably if I had been with him because he, you know, Yogananda said something that uh, he makes a, a very good uh, example here. He said, he told uh, uh, his devotees, when I am not in this physical body, I am closer to you, which is true because we forget, we are so used to going and sitting in front of a physical guru, we forget that all we have to do is close our eyes to connect with this consciousness. And that is more important than going and just falling at the feet of a guru and then walking out without thinking of anything and continuing with the daily life. What is important is in knowing a, a guru, in going to him, the best way of following him is to live by the principles and the guidance that he has given us. And when we do that, and if we fail and if we fall, he's there to pick us up. So surrender is important. But you also have a duty, which is to follow the guidance of a guru. Not just by listening to lectures, not just by going and uh, you know doing a namaskaram 10 times, but in following what they have said. And in a higher level, connecting to that consciousness, which can quickly, like it is almost like getting on a jet plane. We can try going on a train to uh, 13,000 miles away. But if we get on a jet plane, we go faster. And by, that is the difference between our own sadhana and our sadhana when we connect to the higher conscience of a guru, then that, uh, you know, progress is much faster. Go ahead, Sister Sumit. Yeah, we have the next chapter, Karma as Debt. Sage Agastya to Gajarat Swamigal, who was feeling sorry for someone undergoing difficulties owing to karmic effects. This is a song. Why agonize over clearing debts? Why wait? Why look for the reasons for that? Cut that plant along with its harvest. Why do you need a reason if they are suffering for the wrong that they have done? Why shed tears when you see them heave the heavy burden of their own sins on their heads. Committing sins, then covering it up with a white cloth, can they escape from their sins? If one eats too much and complains of stom stomach pain, isn't fasting a good medicine? This is such a beautiful, beautiful verse that he actually 
if you read it in Tamil, it is just just amazingly beautiful. But I have tried my best to translate it in English here. So Gajar Swamigal was worried about somebody else who was, you know, going through a lot of suffering. So he said, why are you worried about that? Sage Agastya is talking in a very, um, in a place of knowledge where he's seeing everything, the past and the present and the future. And he's saying, they are just clearing their debts. Why are you agonizing that they're clearing their debts? Why are you waiting to see what is going to happen? Because each person has to carry their own karma. Our children are going to suffer. But if we can sit here and feel pain for their suffering, but it is not going to help them. Because each person's karma has to be carried by that person alone. They have to atone by right actions in their future and in the present lives. If they have done something wrong, they have to undergo the suffering for that wrong. Nobody else can help them. So as parents, that becomes very important for us to understand because no matter how much our children are suffering, we must remember Appal Agastya's words. Why are you trying? Because they're clearing their debt. Look at it that way. When your child is suffering, the child is clearing its debt, the karmic debt. It's becoming free. Then he says, why do you need a reason if they're suffering? Or why do you need to know why, what is wrong, what wrong they have done? Don't think about all that. Know that when somebody suffers, it is because of their own karma. We cannot blame another for our suffering. If I or a person is living with another person or is in interaction with another person and the person is constantly scolding or something, it is only because of the mistakes the person who is receiving the scolding is going through is because the person had done something in a previous life to receive that kind of negative negativity from another person. So what does the person who gets it do? Stops the cycle. So always remember, we got to stop the cycle by how we react to each person or each event that happens in our lives, especially when it's negative. So why shed tears when you see, see them keep the heavy burden of their own sin on their heads? So why are you worried about it? They have created that burden. They have to hold it. We cannot hold it for them. And then committing sins, then covering it up with a white cloth, can they escape from their sins? So when somebody has <laughs> committed a lot of sin and then they pretend to be good and try to show that they're good, doesn't mean that they're going to stop suffering. In this case, he was talking about me because I was wearing were white after I became very spiritual, uh, spiritually inclined uh, when all this was going on. And my father was sad because I was still suffering because of the karmas I had done. And he said, he's wearing white, but doesn't mean that her sins are gone. So a person can wear white or saffron or anything. They can be a monk, they can be a sannyasi, they can be a, 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 a head of a guru a mat. But if they have committed mistakes, that's going to remain with them until it is atoned, until they suffer for it. So just there is a you know misunderstanding that when once somebody walks on the spiritual path, all the karmas fall away, everything becomes clear, and you know you you you, you become so elevated that you react properly to everything. Your anxiety falls away, anger falls away. That is not true. All of us have the same challenges that everybody else has, except we have the strong foundation of knowledge given by a guru or some a book like Agastya Padipadu, and we know how to react. And because of our devotion and our faith, we are able to better handle it. And because we are handling it better, our future, the building, is going to be a better place because we are not creating more karma to make suffering come back to us. So that is so important to remember. So before we go forward, in the beginning of this uh, ch chapter, there was a poem called Light Within You, and we didn't read that because we wanted to start away straight uh, with the next topic. This is Simati. Would you be able to find it? It's just before the topic, Effects of Karma. 
Uh, just give me a minute. I'm looking for it. While you're looking for it, I'll, I'll start and you can take over as soon as you find it. Light within yes. you. The one that is given birth mother is the first teacher of man. Teacher, the bestower of knowledge comes next. Higher than all this is the Sadhguru. Yet above all this is the soul that is always within you. When this soul that is within you, when this soul that has emanated from the absolute himself is within you, why do you need another form to give you light? Now, this is so very important for all of us because of our saying, yeah, when, we are, when you are born, if your mother is the first one, she becomes your first teacher. She teaches you how to walk, how to eat, how to stand up. Then comes the teacher who bestows knowledge. Then comes the Sadhguru who is higher than all this. But remember, beyond all this is your own light, the soul that is within you. Because that soul comes from the absolute. It has all the characteristics of the absolute. It has the pure supreme knowledge within it. When that knowledge within you is within you, then you are that light inside. Why do you need another form to give you light? Think about this. Because this is again what he has said. You, know, you don't need another person to teach you. You don't need to be reading books to learn. Especially in this time of, uh, of the uh, creation. Where in this world. Because the, everything is aligned so well. That you can actually connect to higher consciousness very quickly. And where is this higher consciousness? It is within you. That soul, that beautiful soul, which is the light of the supreme knowledge that exists within you, knows everything. You only have to become aware of it. That is why walking on the spiritual path and reaching God is called awareness. Self-awareness or self-realization, God-realization. That's what it means. So many of us who cannot get to that stage, we must do what we always do, which is read books and listen to uh, satsangs and gurus. But we must also start listening to our feelings because the feelings are one of the most important tools we have that connect directly to consciousness beyond the mind and the body. You know, a lot of people confuse that Consciousness is part of the mind and body, but no, consciousness exists beyond mind and body. In fact, when you are able to get rid of the, the you know, awareness of your mind and body in meditation is when you connect your consciousness. So you have to make a different distinction between all this. I still remember as a little girl, I had no idea why, but I used to think, what is body? If, if the brain is here, where is the mind? You know, I did not realize until now that I had already been thinking that the brain is only just a physical organ. If the mind is separate from the brain and consciousness is beyond both these two things. So for now, we will stop this today and we will start with the next chapter, Effects of Karma, in the next session.